Hi everyone, Martin again. Well, I hope you enjoy part one of this video on um, the mower pitch. This is part two now. Now, in this video, we're going to be covering the Gorelli Tiger Cross, which was one of the fastest, if not the fastest, mopeds of the 70s. And Italian made, very fast, and they also used to blow up quite a lot because they would normally thrash, just like the Fizzes and every other one of the mopeds that we're going to be featuring in this DVD. But um, here's Brent Fielder, another lovely chap. I met him uh, and had a look at his collection of bikes as well. He repairs them, he restores them. So let's take a look at Brent Fielder and his Gorelli Tiger Crosses and also his other collections as well. But that will come in later videos. So right, what have we got here then Brent? This is a Gorelli obviously, what model is it? It's a 1974 Gorelli Tiger Cross Mark II. And the Mark II, you can tell it because it's got this stripe on the tank, the Mark I had a big thick black painted stripe down there and the Mark I had black forks whereas this has got the, the famous chrome pogo sticks in springs basically. So you obviously had one of these when you were younger then, did you? I had an exact replica of this, well this is an exact replica of the one I had when I was 16 in 1974 and I was the proudest bloke in our town. So I mean what drew you to a Gorelli, I mean rather than the, the, the normal Fizzy or the AP50 or the SS50 for example? Well I started off with a Mobilette which is what the government decided that 16 year olds should have from 1972 onwards. So I had this little mobilette, step through, pedal and plop thing. And I parked up at school one day, absolutely proud as punch. And I heard this terrific noise coming down the school driveway. And, it, and I looked up and there was this yellow and black motorbike hurtling towards me. And it was a kid in my class. And I thought, how can a 16 year old kid be on what looked like a 250? Anyway, he got off it, Paul Johnson. And uh, I said, what's that? And he said, Gorilla Tiger Cross, fastest moped you can get. And that was it. I was just absolutely hooked. Scrambler back tyre, big yellow and black tank, seat big enough to take a bird on when you was hoping to pull one at the youth club. <laughs> and I was, yeah, that was it. I was desperate to get one. Right, so with regards to the, uh, like the other mopeds you were trying to I mean, what was the brake horsepower of something like this, for example? Well, these had 6.2 brake horsepower claimed. Uh, at the other end of the scale, you've got the Andre SS50, which unfortunately only had two and a half. Although it was a really well-made bike, they only had two and a half horsepower. But this had 6.2, and you could get that speed around to 60 mile an hour when you were downhill, where you're bumming the air and your head right down on the tank. I don't think people ever used to tune these, well, obviously because of their power output. Um, I mean, Fizzes and AP50s, for example, were forever being chopped about and tried to be improved upon. But I've never actually seen many of these being changed about. Was that the case back then? That's right. Back in the day. Uh, well, not that we had many mechanical skills between us anyway, but there weren't any tuning bits as such. There were some big bar kits, but they, they never seemed to appear in this country till later. Nowadays, it's a different story. A lot of the guys you'll see have got these 70cc Meteor big bar kits on, and they just do give them a little bit more oomph. But I've always stuck with a 50cc one. This is a standard one, uh, and I've never had any trouble with it. What's the, what's the hardest sort of part for this one to, I mean, the tires across the, the source, for example? Seats, correct mud guards. And there's a little pedal cover under here that covers the pedal gear and the toolbox. Them's the hard bits. It seems to be pretty similar, as I say, like with regards to the other mopeds we we're actually covering. Seats and mud guards seem yeah. to be the standard thing. Yeah. Do you have to, do you, do you lot other people source them from eBay or is there a specialist club to pull? Well, there's a, there's, the best club to be in if you've got a moped is the Sports Moped Owners Club, SMOC. It only costs about eight quid a year and you get a newsletter every couple of months and you can put your wanted ads in there and they've got a website now so you can put your for sale and wanted ads on there uh, and that's the way to go. I think the problem is that parts are all drying up now. There's only a finite number to start with and obviously a lot of them have been skimmed off over the years. Most of the shops have been trawled over the last 10-15 years and all the stuff's gone now. But there's, there's little bits people have got tucked away in the sheds and garages and there's bits that keep coming on the market. Is this one you've actually refurbished yourself, or did you buy this one? Like this? Uh, I've, I've restored about seven or eight Gorillas, and I bought this one. It was half done. Um, the guy who'd done it, Toby, had made a really good job of the engine. The engine, I've not had to touch the engine, and that's about 15 years ago now. Uh, and I, I put a new tank on it, new seat, new handlebars, new mud guards, toolbox. Uh, had a few bits of chroming done, new backlight. So this one, it was like an half strip down and, and finish off job really, rather than the other ones what I've done, which have been right down to the last nut and bolt and start again. I mean, mopeds were obviously well thrashed by teenagers when they first come out. I mean, what were they like for reliability, these things? To be honest, these weren't as good as the Japanese bikes. I mean, the Fizzy was good and the Honda SS50 was unbelievable. They were a lot better made bikes, they were better engineered, everything fitted together well. 
these were built down to a price, but they were highly tuned. And you put a 16 year old on a highly tuned moped, he's going to thrash it every day of its life. That's what I did with mine. Absolutely caned it to bits until it blew up. And I think that's what everybody did. So you could get one of these and get three or 4,000 miles out of them and then you'd have a big blow up and you'd have to have an engine rebuild. And then you're back on the road again doing the same thing. Whereas the SS50, although it was crawling along in the back lane, uh, it was a lot more reliable. It used to tick over like a Swiss watch compared to these. But when they were going, these were great. You actually keep them as standard as possible? Yeah, it's, this, this one's completely standard, uh, except for the back wheel. Everybody has one little touch that they put on a bike, and I've got a slightly bigger back wheel rim on there, but apart from that, it's standard. Um, I think these days, mopeds are more reliable than ever. I mean, with fully synthetic oil to mix with a petrol, uh, that makes a difference. And the new, NG, the new generation of NGK spark plugs, you just never seem to get a, a foul plug like you used to get back in the 70s, that you don't need to decoke them. They just keep running. This one, I've done... Oh, I guess I've done about five, six thousand miles on it and I've not had to touch the engine over the last 15 years. I've done, the most I've done on it in a day is 300 miles and although I had a sore backside at the end of that, uh, the bike was still running perfect. What's how many gears is this one? Four speed box, manual clutch. Clutch is a real strong point on them, the clutches just never seem to wear out and that's one of the spares that's always available is new clutch plates because you just never need them. So this is obviously refurbished, I mean what sort of money would this command in today's market? Uh, you're looking at about, for this one, about 2,300 I would guess. But if you want to start, you start with a wreck, you can buy something for about 400 quid and then you're going to have to pour about two grand into it and how long it will take you to refurb one? Well I actually kept a record of when I did one and it took me 300 hours, I just used to put a tick every time I went in the garage and had an hour and about 300 hours should see one finished and that's for somebody like me who's not exactly a mechanical genius. Right, so now the big moment, Brent. Uh, let's see how you start one of these things up. Okay, mate. Easy peasy with the grilly. Turn the petrol on. A little bit chore. A little bit of a tickle on this, little tickle on the cab. And fingers crossed, it'll start first time. Now again, I filmed this back in 2006 as well, and Brent is, uh, he made a, he also wrote a book called The Bumper Book of Motorcycles, I think from the 70s or 80s. Well, there you go. That was the Gorilla Tire Cross. I never had one. There was someone around where I used to live who had one, and I loved it. I loved the sound of it. It was physically bigger than the fizzy. It looked like a bigger bike all around, but uh, all I ever done was get, get to look at one. I never actually got to actually ride one, so. Anyway, that's part two now. Hope you enjoyed that one. Don't forget the part three. We'll have a look at one of, um, I think it's Brent's other mopeds. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. We love your comments on there, whether it be reminiscing over a bike you once had, or whether it be just uh, leaving a comment if you might have restored one yourself. So all these things go down good. And do hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. Thanks very much indeed. Bye for now. Say bye, Barney. Barney. Say bye-bye. Yeah. Bye for now. See you later. Bye.